Welcome to Trigger Warning with your host, Chris Brumbles. Are you tired of the professional liars of fake news and far-left radicals? Are you ready for truth and common sense? The insanity and divisiveness of political correctness and identity politics have no place here. So welcome to Trigger Warning, where free speech is free speech, not racism. There are no participation trophies, so if your mind is weak, grab your binky, head to your safe space, consider this your trigger warning. The left is on attack again to rid the world of another sin. Dr. Seuss is such a threat, they need the world to soon forget. So cancel his books that children read. They have a problem with everything. They think they're arbiters of truth. Next they'll cancel Winnie the Pooh. I do not like these Marxist clowns that want to burn my country down. I do not like their arrogance or their lack of common sense. I do not like the insanity or their hate for you and me. They should pack and go away. They're not wanted anyway. Good afternoon, Northwest Oregon. Welcome to this edition of Trigger Warning on this, the ninth day of March, 2021. Welcome to the show that rejects the political correctness and leftist ideology that is deliberately pursuing a path of destruction for our country and the world. As we embrace truth, common sense, morals, individual liberty, God, and the principles that America was founded on. Just when you think the left has reached the limits of insanity, just when you think they can sink no lower, when you think they've got tired of eating Tide Pods, they come up with something so ridiculous that you have to stop and wonder why these mental morons are not being forcibly committed by society in general for their own safety and the safety of others. That's right, folks. I know I've said this before, but you really cannot make this stuff up. The left is now canceling Dr. Seuss because racist. Seriously? Oh, and Mr. Potato Head is now going gender neutral. These people must sit around all day smoking meth and eating stupid sandwiches, pondering how they can outdo their last ludicrous thought. I don't get it. Are they just bored living in their mom's basement and hiding in their safe spaces? Whatever the reason, it just makes me want to go... It would be funny if it wasn't so dangerous. This cancel culture is just another dangerous attack on the First Amendment. This was done in Germany. It was done in China. It was done in the Soviet Union. These types of policies have led to hundreds of millions of people being murdered by their own government in peacetime. You know, wasn't even war, just peacetime, you know. But these crayon eaters are, have learned nothing from history. Marxists are either ignorant, or hi- ignorant of history or know the history and are pure evil. Most are just plain evil, but liberty is popular and the American people will prevail in the end. No matter how much of Soros' money they spend, and no matter how much confusion they spread. Eventually, the American people will remember where they came from and who they are. And they'll shout from the rooftops that the king has no clothes. At the Senate confirmation hearing for Rachel Levin, Rand Paul, who you gotta love, had the testicular fortitude to quiz the mentally ill transvestite who is vying for a confirmation from the Senate for Ozidan's Assistant Secretary of Health. Paul was quizzing Levin about his opinion on the sexual mutilation and hormonal replacement of underage children for the purpose of changing their sexual orientation, at least physically and mentally. The wacko repeatedly gave political answers, which is to say that he didn't answer the questions at all. Just deflection. Of course, Democrats just felt that Senator Paul was harassing this nut job. Some of these Democrats, who would be the ones who tried to destroy a couple of President Trump's nominations for the Supreme Court, for no other reason than politics as usual. At least Rand Paul, who is a doctor himself, has reason to be concerned with these ideologues invading our capital and possibly destroying our kids' lives with procedures that cannot be undone if the kid one day becomes sane. When you mess with God's work, nothing good can come of it. Insanity is literally invading our country at the highest levels. People need to reject the idea of being woke and instead just wake up. 
They are making our country into the laughing stock of the world. How about some truth for a minute? I refuse to say the word transgender because there's no such thing. You are born male or female. You can't just wish to be the opposite sex in spite of mentally ill leftist thought process or lack thereof. Meanwhile, as the Oregon supermajority in Salem is pushing crazy law after crazy law and trying to pass anti and illegal gun laws, around the country we see a different story. People are waking up to the tyranny that has embraced some state capitals as well as D.C. We now have 18 states that have passed constitutional carry, the last two being Utah and Montana. Both were passed in February. And we should have two more states standing up for liberty before the end of 2021. The governor of Tennessee said that his legislation is his 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 constitutional carry legislation is number one priority for him. And Indiana is working on their own constitutional carry bill. Missouri has passed through their house with flying colors a Second Amendment sanctuary law that says that they will refuse to enforce any federal gun laws, past, present, or future. And if a cop enforces any of them, they will be fired and never be allowed to be a cop in Missouri again. And any federal officer that tries to enforce them will, any of these illegal laws, will be arrested. Here in Columbia County, we protected our natural born light rights by first passing the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance and then recently passing the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. I've had email conversations with the Yamhill County Commissioner and it sounds like they are possibly going to pass the say-so in their county by this coming Thursday. I'm also hearing that Wasco County is working on a similar, similar legislation to protect their rights. So people are waking up to the tyranny that is viral in this country. I've had two phone calls recently with people from Sanders County, Montana, where the people have a copy of our say-so and are working on getting it passed in their county. And Montana is a constitutional carry state and also outlawed free murder zones, but good for them. I will be making a trip soon to give any help that I may offer. Nowadays, you can't, you can't protect your rights too much, as every power dr- drunk oath breaker is out to destroy our country and to slave our po- enslave our posterity as the morons in salem and washington dc keep pushing illegal laws you will see more and more people at the county level nullifying these freedom killing attempts to usurp the authority that we loaned them to protect our rights i do believe that beijing ozaiden has seriously underestimated the american people and is playing his gun confiscation game from a position of weakness If you notice, they are pushing bills to force background checks for private property in H.R. 8 and even their indefinite gun hold by changing the NICS system, which only has, by the way, a 5% chance of becoming law. The House is begging Ozaiden to enact gun control through executive order, which isn't legal either, so that they will not be held accountable in 2022, but I believe they will be. And in a time in history where gun control is the least popular that it has ever been, it's crazy. All gun laws are illegal and gun confiscation schemes never work in countries where the people have enjoyed liberty. So work at the local level, folks, and make them calls to Salem. Keep calling them, especially to Senator Gerard, and let's get the Republican Senate to walk out and deny a quorum. Not just to protect our gun rights, but to protect the state from extinction extinction from these insane laws being pushed. Salem wants to free all criminals and lock up law-abiding citizens. Do you really want prisons shut down and prostitution legalized in Oregon? Today, my guest is Senator Dennis Linthicum, a great statesman who is working as hard as anyone to protect you. Dennis also just became treasurer of the ORP in hopes of helping get better candidates for Oregon and helping them get elected so that we can rid ourselves of these nut jobs that represent themselves and their ideologies instead of us. Back after the break with Senator Dennis Linthicum. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, 
and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org. O-R-G, and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing, and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon, at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Now, back to Trigger Warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. Welcome back, Columbia County. Today on the show, we have a true statesman with with us in Dennis, Senator Dennis Linthicum. Good afternoon, Dennis. How are things today? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you guys? It, it's, it's actually hard to say you're doing great when we live in a world that's completely turned upside down. But <laughs> nevertheless, we're doing the best we can. Yes, sir. And I appreciate that. So first, first before we get started, I wanted to... I would like to congratulate you on winning the treasurer position for the ORP. And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. apparently, yeah, apparently, new math uh, isn't quite in vogue yet, and they thought I could do my numbers and add my sums correctly, and uh, and so they put me in this position. But wait till they know, wait till they realize that new math means you don't need a right answer, <laughs> and a two can be five. You know, we'll have a whole new world. I, yeah. uh, what's interesting, Chris, is I was having a discussion with a, a, a radio station, a TV station, actually, in Medford, mm-hmm. and, they, uh, and they brought up the point that this is an effort to equal uh, funding and equal performance levels of schools across uh, Oregon. And they ask, um, for example, why didn't I think that when there was a poor performing school that they should loosen up on right answers or wrong answers or whatnot? And, you know, what, what really begs the question is, what do you mean by poor for performance? Mm-hmm. When you deny mean and median and when you di- deny the top 10% and deny the bottom 10%, because those are part of a mathematical equation that is unwarranted with rigor and precision in our current age, then how do you even get to measure a poor performing school district or a good performing school district? So this this is really how unhinged the entire argument is. I realize you asked me a, or you congratulated me on yeah. becoming ORP treasurer, but this really runs deep. This it runs deep into the heart and soul of what's wrong here in Oregon and what we as conservatives will have to do to correct the issues. Right. And... You know, I, I got to tell you, everybody, everybody that I know, all the Patriots were pushing for y'all to win because they were ready to get rid of the. Well, they didn't feel like the other board was really doing anything. But so we've all watched, you know, the pursuit of the by the majority party in Salem to totally extirpate individual liberty, sanity, and basically plunder us for years now. Many of us have wanted to see the change in the ORP. What was the deciding factor that got you, you and? I don't know if you can speak for the other guys, but got you all to run for the board. Yeah, well, I I think we all had uh, the same perspective. Uh, It was, uh, you know, we've been in the same, uh, same, same is often hard because everybody becomes complacent. And so what we, each of us decided that it was, it was, was a perfect opportunity for change We were hoping for um, a better outcome at the presidential election. Yes. And um, the the voter, uh, the issues of uh, irregularities is what the mainstream media likes to call them. They're also known as fraudulent uh, voting. But anyway, those irregularities really upset the apple cart. And now we see uh, President Biden struggling 
to keep his own um, after a, a mere couple of months in office. The tragedy that has happened here in the United States of America because of big media, because of government censorship, because of misdeeds and irregularities and fraud and failure of the Democrat left, we are in a really tough spot. And so as Republicans, we decided we wanted to uh, take Republican Party in a new direction where we would be a strong enough force in the public mind and spirit that we could change elections, we could convince people of the beauty of our platform and the rightness of our cause and the future of our country. These are things about American prosperity that, quite frankly, the left has completely lost because they're so um, married to uh, identity politics. And they're not married to principles about freedom and liberty and um, and independence for you and your family and your own business enterprise and your own just pursuits. They're not interested, frankly, in your happiness, your liberty, or your life. And they would just as soon squeeze all of that out of you. And we decided it's time to make the Republican Party look, sound, and feel different than they have been. We've been playing the Democrats at their own game. And frankly, we're lousy tyrants. We're lousy totalitarians. We're lousy Democrats. So they don't like our ideas anyway. Well, then it's about time we, we relied on the Declaration of Independence yes. and the U.S. Constitution to make our game. And that's exactly where I want to stand. I want to stand on our party platform. It's by far and away, if anybody bothers to read it, they will like those ideals better than the ideals and the guineas and the parasites that are crawling through the Democrat Party platform or the Independent Party platform. So I'm, I'm happy we ran. I'm happy we won. And uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if we can actually engineer this comeback that we're all hoping for. Oh, I think you got a winner there if you can, if you can manage to do it. Hopefully, so that was going to be my next question. Will you, your candidates stand on the platform? Or are we going to, we, you know, can we look for more Ferris Bueller's who needs a day off to run as a Republican on a socialist platform? Will y'all? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah I, that's a great question. And yeah. I think that's one of the biggest issues. One of the biggest issues is why in the world do we have a party platform if nobody's going to follow it? Yeah. So the, the Senate Republicans and the House Republicans should get off of their rhino bandwagon and forget about trying to placate or cater to all of those different categories of people that we have. Your listeners may not know this, but currently the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, has identified 100 genders. Now, <laughs> now how do you think... How do you take care of those hundred genders in your workforce? If you're a burger shop or a, a, a coffee shop or a a, um, a a brew pub, how do you make sure you have the right number of quote you know appropriate gender employees in your domain? And the answer is this is abs- absurd. This is ridiculous. This is something we should be focusing on the content of people's character, not the way they dress or um, or the the color of their skin. We should be contenting on their commenting and and contemplating and hiring based on their integrity, based on their honesty, based on their truthfulness. Can they do their sums correctly? Do they have the skills I need? Can they engineer this bridge for me? Can they, um, uh, you know, are they arrogant? Are they boastful? Are they proud? Are they gentle? Are they kind? Are they, uh, do, do they have forbearance? You know, do they have self-control? What kind of individual are they like? Mm-hmm. And that has nothing to do with the way they dress or the, um, the color of their skin. It's got to do with their internal spiritual being. What kind of person are they? We've made the mistake in modern America of thinking of people as human doings. What do you do? I, well, hi, what are you? Nice to meet you. What are you? I'm an engineer. What, and what do you do for a living? I'm a police officer. What do you do for a living? I'm, uh, I work at the, at the local hospital. It's not what we do with our lives that counts. It's the kind of spirit that we carry around. It's our individual character that counts. 
And so we, we're not human doings, we're human beings. What kind of being are you? I'm an honest person, I'm, I've got integrity, I've, I'm trustworthy, I'm, 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 and you can go through all those categories. None of those categories show up in today's identity politics. Right. And it's really unfair that we're, our mindset has become so warped. You know, <clears throat> you're making too much sense here. They're going to be beating their heads on the wall in Salem. You know, I <laughs> I tell you what, I'm already I can already hear the chance Dennis Lentham for governor. <laughs> I can't. So we, yeah. so I talked to I, I don't know if I, well I'm going to say it. I talked to Bill Courier about a year ago and was complaining about a few things such as are y'all going to be looking for good candidates because he told me it wasn't their job. Will y'all yeah, actively and, be looking for good can- candidates? Yeah, and I I was I was surprised um, mm-hmm. uh, that uh, at that statement too. You yeah. know that the, there the, there and I I understand the principle. The principle is you know we should grow it. Uh, we ought to be a grassroots movement. We ought to mm-hmm. grow our own candidates for local commissioner. And um, and local council person and local school board person, et cetera, all of those things. I agree with that entirely. Um, and yet, when when somebody moves up the ladder, you know, step one, step two, step three, and they're coming into their own in terms of their voice and their uh, their understanding of our founders and the constitutionally federated republic and what that means. Um, th- then, then they they all of a sudden have more bandwidth. They they carry more weight. They they have a stronger uh, presence of of being than the the other people who are just at the grassroots level. And I think at that point, it ought to be re- reasonable for the Republican Party to throw in with one of those good eggs that has come up through the grassroots program. I think the problem is that people think that what that would mean is there would be it would eliminate competition because there's just the one chosen one, mm-hmm. and um, and they don't like that coming from the ORP, and yet and yet the Republican Party has to figure out what how do we bring liberty into the conversation? How do we get away from the idea that? Um, that uh, you know, cronyism is okay as long as it's my cronies instead of the Democrat cronies. At some point, we we are missing the the boat because we're so invested in keeping the state alive and and paying all those economic resources into the prison system, the police system, into the court system because we believe naturally in law and order and justice. And the left doesn't believe in law and order and justice. Obviously. And so they're trying to dismantle all those things. But at some point, maybe we ought to dismantle the prison system as it currently exists because we're spending way too much money for way too little uh, end results. I mean, we do have a prison population problem. And every time somebody says there ought to be a law, the Democrats are all on board for there ought to be a law against carrying a firearm within a jurisdiction that says no firearms allowed, and you'll pay a fine of $125,000 for mistakenly (laughs) doing that without seeing the sign stuck in the grass. And yet at the same time, they, uh, they don't want law and order when it comes to obedience to a police officer saying, uh, please stand back, please stand back. If you, if you violate that under the current uh, legislation that's before the Senate Judiciary Committee, that, if that becomes law, that will not be a crime anymore. But it will be a crime to dangle a noose in front of somebody because um, that's a racial threat and it's, a, it's white supremacy at its worst. And so uh, all of a sudden we're making so many laws. 4,000 new bills are coming before the Senate uh, this, sh- this session without the public's involvement at all. You know, eight people call in at, at a time in a public meeting, 
and and there's typically 150 people in any hearing room, and there's six or seven, eight hearing rooms all going at the same time every day during this time of year. So the public has effectively been denied access to this system, and it's a tragedy on steroids, and we've got to figure out how to bring it back to normal. I agree. I, I, I just love everything you say. We're going to have to take a break right now, but we'll be back in about three minutes with Senator Dennis Linthicum. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org. O-R-G, and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing, and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Now, back to Trigger Warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. Hello, all you Triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left-wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing, and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Now, back to Trigger Warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. Welcome back, Columbia County. We're on the radio with <clears throat> Senator Dennis Lenthicum, who is a statesman. He's not a politician, in my opinion, and I, I'm, I'm so thankful that we have him now on the board of the Oregon Republican Party. So, Dennis, we were talking about the ORP. I just want a couple more questions about that, and then we'll move on. So just so you know, the patriots in this state did support y'all, but... We really want to see Solomon you go. Now, I had Trevor Loudon on my show several weeks ago, and he he seems to think he has proof that that Solomon you is actually connected to the CCP. What, what is your? I don't even know if you can talk about that, but if you can, what is your opinion on that? Yeah, uh, I I don't I don't have any of those details. We we're not even there yet. Uh, I right. I'm. I'm the treasurer. I'm I'm just now getting to the bank. I'm I'm in Salem for for this week. We're going to discuss in our um, in our uh, Republican caucus whether we should walk out on Senate Bill five five four or not. Yes, I'm you uh, trying to encourage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I'm trying to encourage everyone to walk out on that, mm-hmm. um, uh, Bill, because it, 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 look, at we at some point, the Democrats have come up with too many things that are offensive to uh, a, a, every segment of society here in Oregon, except for their union buddies get great money, they get all kinds of tax dollars coming out of the system, Everywhere the Democrats can create a monopoly, they'll create a monopoly enterprise, and they'll protect that enterprise, and then they'll turn around and start taxing those people because they know they've got the economic resources to withstand the attack. Uh, the beer and wine, uh, you know, they love uh, Senator Prezansky enjoys being part of the beer lobby and whatever, yeah. and uh, the brewery, what do they call it, the brewery lobby or something like that. And yet here we are raising taxes on beer and wine consumption, and um, you know we're slowly, slowly going to tax the nickels and dimes out of everybody's pocket. And what your question, I I got a little sidetracked. That's okay. My comment was going to be I haven't even signed the signature card. I'm here in Oregon for the this week's sessions and our Republican caucus to discuss 554, mm-hmm. and I haven't even made it to the local bank to get myself on the signature card yet. So we're just now starting to get into um, the ORP uh, arena and figure out what we've been doing wrong and where we should go and what are the important aspects of cha- that we need to change to get the Republican Party on track. We've been derailed for a long time, and first we got to get the rail car, get the locomotive back up on the track, and then we'll hitch everybody to it and go chug along and make a difference in the world we live in. Well... <clears throat> I, I got to tell you, I'm going to change gears just a little bit. And by the way, great answers for everything. Our founders did not put an emergency clause, in, as you know, in our Constitution, because they, <laughs> they knew that there were, everything would become an emergency. And the, the right. emergency clause violates most of the Bill of Rights, uh, not just of the U.S. Constitution, but Oregon Constitution. How can they justify that? I mean, how can that be justified? We have laws and rules we have to follow. The, the legislature has laws and rules they have to follow. How can they just blatantly disregard their own rules? Well, yeah, the, you know, there's a, there's there's rules and uh, and and there is a desire to circumvent those rules at every turn. The, you know, the Pharisees were famous for this. There's ten commandments, and all of a sudden, the Pharisees have some six thousand some odd rules that they're following. Because people um, want to break the rule, but they don't want to break the rule and bear the wrath of God or bear the wrath of voters. So they determine they can break the rule if they create another rule that says you don't have to follow the first rule if you don't want to. And and that's why there's this um, little nomenclature at the end of all of the, of probably 2,500 of the 4,000 bills that says, uh, because we are in a state of emergency, this becomes effective immediately, you know, or some language to that uh, uh, import. And that putting that on a piece of paper doesn't make it an emergency, but right. we pretend that it does. And it doesn't change and, the Constitution. Uh, no, it, do- it doesn't change the Constitution. It doesn't change the constitutional protections mm-hmm. that have been, that were originally instituted to protect people. Look at if people want to think about the U.S. Constitution as a rule book, let's start, let's go to the federal level and then move back to the state. If the U.S. Constitution is a rule book, think of it like the lines painted on the, the deck of the gymnasium. This are, these are the lines for a basketball court. These, this is how we're going to play the game of basketball. This is the key. You can't hang out in the key for more than three seconds. This is a free throw line. You have to stand here. This is a three second uh, or a, a three point uh, distance loop ar- around the court for shooting a ball that's worth three points instead of two points. Any other balls within these areas are out of bounds, in bounds, etc. And we did that. We laid out all those rules so that the players would follow the rules and we would know that the game was being fair and balanced and appropriate and just. You know, clearly all of those are in play. 
And then we hire umpires or referees, you know, and they're the guys blowing the whistle and throwing the flags like we're on a, in a football field. Today what we have is Democrats dribbling up in the bleachers and saying, hey, I'm, this is fair. This is fair. Uh, what do you mean that's fair? We changed the rules yesterday. You changed the rules? When did I see that? Where? How did you notify us of that? Nope, nope, and nope. You never. So that what they're doing is they're violating all the rules. They know they're violating the rules. The same thing happened within the six states um, that Trump lost in the swing state um, shenanigans right. during the election. All of those rules were changed illegally by their own judiciary and not by the legislative bodies, which is a requirement. And yet their own Supreme Court said, ah, oh, no harm here. And then as they came up to the U.S. Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court echoed the claim and said, well, the state legislatures didn't see anything wrong, so far be it for us to accuse them of doing something wrong. And so you, what you have is you have all these umpires and referees walking around with their bandanas over their eyeballs, and not only are they violating the constitutional requirements, which were drafted ahead of time, the lines have been painted there for centuries. And we're violating let, those. We don't, let king, yeah. we don't let kings in the, in, in my opinion, well, not just my opinion, it's the fact that Constitution, the U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land. We know that from... Article Six, Clause Two, and and everybody swears an oath to it. But even Oregon, I mean, she's violating a ton of the Oregon Constitution. For instance, so I was talking to Chris Ann Hall. I, I think he, I don't know if you know who she is. She's a very good constitutional yeah. attorney. And this this really struck me when she said she said she was we were going over each you know article they were violating, and we were talking about the separation of powers. So, and she said. How can a state legislature, when you have separated power, give some of their powers to the governor? Imagine if they tried to, to give, take some of the governor's power. Then you have no separation of power. That just really struck me. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, that's exactly what my lawsuit was about. Mm-hmm. Remember, um, I've been part of a lawsuit. We're still, we've got another appeal going now where our claim is that the governor violated, uh, you know, here's just one of the claims. We've got five different points. One was Article 4, sec, uh, let's see, Article 4, Section 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it specifically says our uh, government is comprised of three divisions right. in the state right. constitution. They're called divisions, not branches. And it's the legislative, the judicial, and the um, executive. And then the very next sentence, and people can look this up, the very next sentence says, no uh, division can usurp the authority or exercise the power of any other division. Right. And so has no, has the meaning of no changed in Salem? (laughs) I mean, have they redefined it? (laughs) Sorry. Right. Well, no, you're absolutely right. And this is the point. This is why the, the for your listeners to keep in mind the basketball court drawing, these are the rules, and you can't violate these. You can't dribble outside this. You can't be dribbling out in the parking lot and say, it's okay this time. It's an emergency. You know, and, and that's the point. And Chris Ann Hall, I, I do know where I've spoken with her on many occasions yeah. and been to several of her deals yeah. um, where she does a great presentation. But in all of these areas, what we actually see is we see government growing into areas where, frankly, it doesn't even have any business. It has no authority. Right. And that when we say no authority, it's no constitutional authority. There's no area that was drafted there's no lines on the court that say you can get into this area we said no this is an area you cannot get into you cannot get into the bleachers those are individuals and their private lives and their private families and you're not allowed to dribble up there in the bleachers and we never wanted to be ruled by a king on horseback or somebody in a uniform we wanted a peaceful powerful republic in which civilians, the ordinary man and woman on the street, just conducted their own lives, their own affairs, their own desires, their own pursuits. And we see this in the Declaration. You, These are self-evident truths. 
that you have been endowed by your creator with certain inalienable rights, and that among these, there's tons of them, but that among these are life and liberty and your own pursuits, your own pursuit of happiness, your own just pursuits. As long as they're legitimate pursuits, you should be able to conduct your own affairs and pursue those things in any way you imagine um, appropriate. And then the court system was designed to say, oops, that was inappropriate, and hold you in, you know, to a, a, a concept of justice, which says you can't violate anybody else's rights to pursue something that you wanted. You can't steal Chris Brumble's $10 just because mm-hmm. he sit next to you and his wallet's on the table. You can't do that because what you do is you violate the personal property that belongs to Chris, mm-hmm. and that would be unfair, unjust, unworthy, un, you know, whatever, and we could, we could understand that. Yeah, and, and they wouldn't um, like the consequences. <laughs> they really wouldn't like well, the consequences. Yeah. <laughs> well, you stop, yeah. you st- when you're reading the, about the Declaration, the, the next line, and to protect those rights governments were instituted and so when they're not when they're doing the opposite of protecting our rights when they're plundering us and 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 stealing not only our rights but our money and everything property everything else do they have any more i mean i don't see the legit legit they're killing their own legitimacy i would think well yeah this is this is how tyrants rule though they can't rule by consent of the governed Mm -hmm. They can't rule by protecting those rights. They can't rule by ensuring that you have freedom and liberty. The only way they, a tyrant knows how to rule is with brute force. Yeah. He's going to tell you where you have to stand, what mask size you have to wear, what color, you know, whether you put a, a yellow star on your arm and walk in the gutter or whether you get to come in and shop here with the rest of the good people of our nation. They've got the right now. They are so intent on destroying and um, and canceling those people that disagree with them that they're they are pursuing tyranny. Yep. And at the federal level and at the state level, we got the same things going. At the federal level, they're they're uh, making the background check extend by ten and extend by ten days and ten days and ten days and ten days. Right. And here in Oregon, we've got the limitless background check thing going. Instead of saying, "Look, it, it's up. To, you can you can release the firearm even though the background check hasn't come through. It's been thirty days." They're going to say, "Nope, you can't release it ever." And right now, nobody releases the firearm because they're afraid of the ensuing lawsuit. Right. And um, and and so there are just so many things where they've overstepped their bounds. And part of my goal as being in the ORP as well as being a senator in the in the Republican caucus is to fight for these concepts at a logical, sound, well reasoned, and um, you know, rock solid position. Right now, Dr. Seuss, you know, we, you and I, grew up thinking he was rock solid. What a fun way to learn rhyme. And now it turns out he was a, a you know a, a a bad guy that should somehow get you know I'd I'd hate to have to create an effigy of him you know who knows what it would look like get yeah. so many odd characters and creatures show up in his books but this is how ridiculous absurd and uh, you know. Uh, a denial of reality. We happen to live in a world. Hey, hey Dennis, world I, I, I hate to interrupt. Uh, we got to take a break for, for just a few minutes here, and we'll be right back. Hello, all you triglets out there listening to Trigger Warning. This is where we reject political correctness and left wing insanity, but instead we embrace truth and common sense. You know, there is only one gun group in Oregon that will not compromise on your rights, and that is Oregon Firearms Federation. With all the trickery and evil bills that come from the supermajority in Salem, you need a friend who will keep you informed of these nefarious plans to plunder your rights. If you have not done so, don't delay. Go to OregonFirearms.org. O-R-G, and sign up for the free alerts. It will cost you nothing, and you will get the truth on what's going on in Salem. There is absolutely no common sense in giving up your rights, so sign up for our email alerts, and if you want to donate, we won't complain, and it will be put to good use. 
Oregon Firearms Federation, the only no-compromise gun group in the state of Oregon, at OregonFirearms.org. Sign up today. Northwest Observer, another great news source that tells it like it is. Give it a try. I'm sure you will be impressed. It's time that we have truth in the news. So go to Northwest Observer and give Readout News a shot, and you have nothing to lose and only facts to gain. Now, back to Trigger Warning, where we reject political correctness and left-wing nut job policies, and we embrace truth and common sense. With your host, Chris Brumbles. So uh, we're back with Dennis Lithicum here in Columbia County, and uh, did you do you remember what you were talking about? Do you want to finish your thought, Dennis? I had to kind of cut you off there, or are we on to another subject? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was I wasn't expecting you just to bring out a knife and whack me off at the at the <laughs> yeah. you know one word too many. But th- no, I I I was just belly aching about you know the the form of government that we should have. Mm-hmm. Should should it should be a form of government that that can exist through time because it's founded on natural law, on the laws of nature and our nature's God, yes. and it's founded on these principles that have existed, you know, uh, for just about forever versus something we dreamed up last Tuesday, yes, um, and the, the the dream of that that arises from last Tuesday, we can see at one time there were only fifty four. Um, uh, gender uh, preferences, and then there was 64 or 67 or something, and now there's more than 100. And, you know, because these are just coming, being made up out of full cloth, what comes next and where does it go to? Now, I, I don't mind that, you know, I agree there might be people that are confused, and we should deal with that confusion with compassion and charity, and we should help those people. But helping those people doesn't happen by inventing another gender um, preference, right. uh, 101, 102, and 103. You know, in, in the natural world, we, we, if you've got cattle or you've got horses or you've got sheep, you know male from female. In the flower world, we the reason we have daffodils is because somebody understands exactly how flowers grow and what the uh, what the stamen looks like and where the pollen comes from and why honeybees are important and the whole nine yards. We know this stuff. We understand it. It's reasonable through natural law to understand male and female. And what we've done is we've thrown confusion right down the middle between those. And yes. so now we have a gray area between those, and we get lost in the gray area instead of leaning for what we know and leaning to the left and right and standing on those values and then helping everybody in the gray area. We're now making the gray area go from wall to wall. And so um, it's, it's, really, it's really tough. And whether you use natural law to see male and female throughout the history of our world, or you were use a biblical worldview that says God created them, he created them male and female, either of those cases we've got, you know, on one side and we've got on the other side, and today the left has successfully sown so much confusion and gray area between those that everybody's unsure of themselves, and they're doing the same thing with something like taxes, what's the right amount of tax? What's the right amount of property ownership? What does it mean when somebody doesn't own a home and hasn't a place to stay and are considered homeless? And what about those on the other side that have these mansions? And how do we level the playing field? And they keep operating in that gray zone down the middle. They want to level the playing field and bring all those. (laughs) uh, Yeah, that's their job is to create and sow confusion and disrupt society. And this is a Marxist tactic uh, from... From, from it's been a Marxist tactic before Marx ever wrote, you know, gobs and gobs of idiocy about it. It's been a tactic for um, for destroying a, a civilization and erecting something else. Right. So we got about six minutes here, and I was I'm, I'm going to switch gears to. Well, we are kind of talking about what's going on. 
I want you, I heard a lady the other day. I, I actually went to the DMV to get my license renewed, and that was really a fun experience for someone who will not wear a mask. And I got, I got, I got it. I mean, they had to clear the building, but <laughs> this lady in front of me said something just ridiculous. Said that the Repub- the Democrats try so hard to work with the Republicans, and the Republicans just keep walking out. And I want to straighten that out a little bit. Could you tell us a day in the life of a Republican in Salem? <laughs> <laughs> and just how much input you get and or, or say, you have any say at all or anything? Well, yeah. So the, the people ought to know that, um, that the, the, the com- committees are ruled by super majorities right. at, 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 during the vote, and c- committees are organized by the Senate president or the Speaker of the House, both Democrat positions, okay. and they organize a committee um, based on their seniority position. Mm-hmm. So in my Senate committees, there's typically five members – Three of them are Democrat, two of them are Republican. And so it doesn't matter which bill, it doesn't matter which inning, it doesn't matter which day the game's on, it doesn't matter what game we're playing, whether it's soccer or football or basketball, it does not matter. You, everybody in your listening office right now knows the score of every committee on the Senate side. If there's five people, there's three uh, Democrats and two uh, Republicans, what's the score? It's three to two. Mm-hmm. If there happened to be a committee where there were more heads involved, it would be a seven-person committee with four Democrats and three Republicans. What's the score? Four to three. And so uh, typically Republicans don't get anything at all right. because it's always four to three. It's always five to three. It's always it's worse in the House because they – don't have 30 uh, individuals for representative body. They've got 60. And so their their committees are every bit as lopsided, formulated and arranged and managed in the same way, majority rules. And first of all, we ought to realize who says the majority is right. 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 There's, there's nothing, you know, you'll not find anywhere a biblical concept that says the majority is always right. And, um, and well, that so, requires logic, it, though. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, but, you know, this, this is when, when misguided public opinion honors what is despicable and despises what is honorable mm-hmm. and punishes virtue but rewards vice when it encourages what is harmful and discourages what is useful, when it applauds falsehood and smothers truth under indifference or insult, a nation that turns its back on progress cannot be restored. And this is Frederick Bastiat in 1850. Yep. Yep. And he's a French guy writing in Economic Harmonies. By the way, if you can uh, put up a link in your, um, in your website on this radio show, have everybody go to Mrs.org, uh, M-I-S-E-S dot O-R-G, and look for Bastiat's audio book or PDF for EPUB, or they can buy a hard copy if they want. Stop by my office when we finally get into the building, and I'll hand you a copy of Bastiat's The Law. It's 74 pages. It's an hour and a half on the road. It is a fabulous book, and I recommend everybody listen to it because... You know, he was writing in the late 1840s and 1850s before the Civil War, and he identifies the debauchery that was happening then and was leading up to war. And right now, you and I all day long have been discussing the debauchery that exists within our own communities and how do we uh, wake people up and have them see the truth for what it is, recognize what is honorable, what is... um, uh, should what should be encouraged, what is harmful, and what we should avoid. This is just common sense, mm-hmm. day-to-day, how do you live life in a world that is being um, infiltrated by just, um, you know, for, quite frankly, crummy ideas. Yeah. And, and we've got to put a stop Bo- to it. would call what we see now legal plunder. So we we got about a minute. Yeah. You want to you want to finish off your thoughts and can you in a we got a minute left. I was wondering if you had any last well, thing you'd yeah, like to wrap it up with. Yeah, no, the, no, this has been a great conversation. Yeah. Well, I hope it's been great. 
doing all the talking. Um, that's okay. That's what I like. I mean, we could do we could do a week show with you. <laughs> I mean, I mean a whole week long. I don't mean week show. But yeah, yeah, yeah. How were you spelling the word week? I'm not sure. I got what you were me. <laughs> w e w e e k. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I and I'm teasing. You know yeah, that. Yeah. Um, anyway, I look forward to coming back. I hope mm-hmm. this was uh, advantageous for your listeners. I hope it makes sense. Yes. We will fight for denying quorum if, if wherever we can get um, uh, and muster support. We will muster support yes. for keeping the traditional rules and values and livelihoods of the people who live in Oregon intact and out of the reach of gov- government, because right now government is our number one enemy. Yes, and thank you very much, Dennis. And I want to th- we're out of time now, so I want to thank Senator Dennis Lenthicum for coming on the show today. And I want to remind you all to be informed about what's going on in Salem, because the Marxist Party is pushing Marxism and trying to destroy the state. If they, if they get their way, we will wish we were lived in California, more than likely. Let's keep Columbia County normal and sane, and remember that liberty is the inherent possession of men, not government gift. I'll see you next week here on Trigger Warning. God bless. You've been listening to Trigger Warning with Chris Grumbles. You can email your comments to kohi.radio at gmail.com. And listen again next time for Trigger Warning with Chris Grumbles.